Welcome to my 30 beers for 30 years series. A bit of a late addition to the box. Here we have Old Chimneys Good King Henry Imperial Stout. Uh, now this is, I mean, it's an iconic British beer. Always ridiculously highly rated. Except now the brewery is no more. Old Chimneys, the brewery, actually closed operations down sort of in March last year. And Grains Brewery, who's another sort of local sort of like cask brewer, they sort of worked out a deal to, to bring the original owner and brewer back and they they brew this beer now at grains brewery it's now slightly stronger it used to be around nine percent it's now ten percent i haven't had a bottle of it in ages i haven't had a bottle since it's been brewed at grains brewery yeah it is a traditional imperial stout in as much it has no adjuncts um it has this like sort of bottle cap sticker on the top i wonder if there's anything underneath no it's just blue nice little touch there little bottle cap sticker you don't see that very much whoa black betty bam badam a bit of a dusty glass. Nothing worse, eh? Hey? Pop my little slidey cap back on because I'm gonna gonna consume the rest of this in a, a bit later. Oh no, I don't want to put that on, do I? Look at this. Every self-respecting beer enthusiast needs one of these bottle caps, uh, bottle openers. I mean, they've kept the like label artwork the same. They've not changed that, and it has this little sort of a uh, I don't know what is that little plant on there? Chinipidium bonus hermicus. Obviously got something to do with something. Oh, is that is Good King Henry that plant? I think Good, Good King Henry is a plant. Good King Henry always reminds me of um, Good King Wenceslas. Good King Henry last looked hard, etc. Because uh, I was faffing about and dicking about. The head that was there has dissipated pretty quick. That is sticking to the glass, staining in the glass. Looks absolutely fantastic. If a little bit effervescent for a, for a sort of 10% beer. But let's give it a little sniff, shall we? Oh my goodness. Ho ho ho. So rum and raisin was the first thing that hit me. Very brandy like. Bit of licorice in there. It's ultra, ultra dark and roasty. There's a bit of sweetness to this and it's really remind me of like a crunchy bar. Like honeycomb wrapped in chocolate. But then it's, then there's I mean it's it's ultra complex. Getting some prunes now. Very Christmassy beer. Oh, that smells amazing. Let's go for a taste. Cheers. Oh, wow. Wow, that's so smooth. So it's, it's similar in, in some respects to the elusive beer that I had a couple of weeks ago in as much... They, 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 I mean, they, the, the profile is completely different, but in terms of the aroma is so intense, so complex, and you can really delve deep into it. But then when you taste it, it's smooth, it's drinkable. It's not harsh or anything like that. Wow. It's not the thickest Imperial Stouts, and I don't think it ever was. It was never gloopy sort of like motor oil. There is a boozy quality. There's almost a bit of sort of a red wine tannic edge to it. There's a little bit of a dark chocolate sweetness. There's, e there's even a, a bit of a, a sort of a, a dry smokiness to the finish. But like if you've been barbecuing all day and it's sort of like you just can just taste the smoke. Very sort of like subtle. And then more predominantly, yeah, it, again, it's like figs, prunes. Oh, but that is a storming beer. Truly is. So it's an absolutely iconic beer. So that's why I stuck it in the box, really. Iconic beer that's local to me. So if you've missed any of the other 30 Beers for 30 Years videos and you'd like to catch up, then uh, you can find the playlists all around. But I've been Jake. Remember to like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on Good King Henry. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Good <sighs> King Henry last looked hard. On the feet of Steven.